So, yes. um, hello everyone, sorry for being late, um, but I'm very happy today that um, we have uh, Julianus and, um, sorry, I cannot pronounce your name. <laughs> um, That's fine. Yes, it. Yes, it. Yes. Um, to to have a bite sized talk today, I I will hand it over to you uh, to introduce yourself if you if you want to. Yeah, so I am Julianus uh, Julianus Pfeuffer. Um, I am a postdoc at the Zuse Institute Berlin, and I was working a long time at the uh, my doing my PhD at the University of Tübingen and the Freie Universität Berlin and was a long time OpenMS uh, contributor and maintainer. And um, a lot of the pipeline that we will present today is, is of course, based, is based on OpenMS and it will be about mass spectrometry. Okay, I can present also myself. Um, I am Yasset uh, per I I am the team coordinator of Pride Database. Uh, which is the largest um, proteomics database um, at MBL EDF. And I work with uh, also one of the developers of quantum S. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if there are no further questions in the beginning, I also can start sharing my screen. Would that be okay? Uh, Francisca, yes, right? Let's see. Uh, you, you co host, you should be. Okay. Let's see. Um, do you see the, the presentation or do you see some of my uh, PowerPoint things? We see the presentation. Perfect. The presentation today will be about uh, a Nextflow workflow this time. And um, it's not a super recent uh, addition to the next uh, to the NF Core um, community platform. But it was there for a long time, or a little bit longer time, but we just recently released a 1.1 version that is um, much more stable and much uh, more up to end of course standards. And we thought uh, that would be a great time to introduce it. Um, it is a, a workflow for, as the name implies, uh, quanti quantitative mass spectrometry data analysis. And of course, following all the uh, and of course standards, uh, it is um, meant to be very reproducible and also applicable for large scale analysis. Uh, for example, on those big public um, repositories like Pride, where um, yes, it is from. And um, yeah, what are the areas of application of our workflow? It is planned as a most-in-one workflow for the analysis of quantitative mass spectrometry experiments in general. That can mean um, metabolomics, proteomics, proteogenomics, but um, the current focus and the, the, the thing or the, the topic that we started with in the workflow is relative quantification of proteins or modified proteoforms based on a mass spectrometry experiments. Um, and that, and I will present uh, first, or uh, ask the question, why do people do proteomics and how is it different from the usual genomics that we see here in NF Core? Um, well, one, one thing, one nice example that people always give is the dif difference between a caterpillar and a butterfly. So while they share the exactly the same genome, unless it, like some very slight mutations due to the stage of life, um, 
they have a vastly different proteome, not only in the like amount of proteins that are expressed, but also the uh, types of proteins that are expressed and how they are modified. And all of this um, gives a much better representation of the actual phenotype of an organism or a cell. So the proteomics can be used in addition or instead of genomics or even transcriptomics. And um, we have one technique to uh, to get um, the quantities of proteins, for example, in the cell is mass spectrometry. And um, like I would say the most um, common technique to do that is via liquid chromatography coupled mass spectrometry. This means you you digest your sample with the proteins first. You uh, put it into an Eppendorf tube. So you subject this to a liquid chromatography to split them up by some chemi physical chemical properties to make the analysis easier. You ionize them, put them into the mass spectrometer, and the mass spectrometer can then um, measure the ions and the, the amount of ions that are there based on their property or their behavior in a magnetic field. And what you get out is a uh, so-called oh, so-called mass spectrum, where um, you you can see the intensity or which is related to the amount of ions that were there for a specific mass or to be specific a specific mass to charge ratio. And the problem with this is that those mass spectrometry experimental setups can be very complex. Um, people add new types of mass spectrometers, new types of uh, experiments that they want to, how they um, invent new labeling strategies and how to compare different samples and so on. So here I give a little overview uh, over the um, most common uh, strategies in quantitative proteomics and want to highlight which of them are supported by quantum S. Um, overall, it's we only support relative quantification since absolute quantification can usually only be done with certain standards and a few people do it unless they have a, a really um, yeah, exciting project going on. Um, but also in relative quantification, you have two big uh, subtypes, you can have uh, labeled relative quantification and label free relative quantification. Uh, label free is usually cheaper because you, the labels are expensive, but uh, the analysis is sometimes a bit more complex. And here you can have um, so called data independent acquisition, data dependent acquisition. You can have it feature based, spectral counting. Um, regarding labeling, uh, you can label the proteins or the, the protein pieces, the peptides um, in vitro, or you you feed um, you feed your organism or cells uh, certain amino acids, labeled amino acids uh, in vivo. And um, our focus for labeled quantification was the so-called TMT and iTrack strategies, which are very similar in analysis types. So if you have any of any data set that uh, was gathered with one of those green strategies here, uh, quantum S will, will be, should be very useful for you. Um, here's an overview of the pipeline. Um, everything starts with the, the spectra in MZML or in raw format. MZML is open. Um, it's sometimes a bit more verbose, bigger. It's an XML based format. Um, but we can also uh, read raw files from the Thermo Fisher instruments uh, through conversion. Um, we do some pre-processing on the spectra as well as on the um, protein database that you give the pipeline to, um, to say which proteins you think that are in your sample and you would like to identify and quantify them. Um, then we have th three different 
um, branches, let's say, that depend on which strategy was uh, the experiment was based on. We have this data dependent label free uh, branch in blue, data dependent uh, isobaric labeling, um, TMT or eye track in red, and data independent acquisition uh, in green. The, the top ones are usually done by OpenMS tools. Um, the, it's a framework for mass spec analysis, while the lower one is done by DIN. Um, uh, it's a, a separate package where we were in close collaboration with the author to, to make it as um, efficient as possible in a, in a distributed environment, computing environment. I will go over the steps one by one. Um, at first, a bit more details about the input. Um, I mentioned the mass spectra already. Um, the second one is an experimental design that you need. And we highly recommend to use the um, sample to data relationship format. It's a community developed and tab separated format that for um, the uh, data sets, for example, that are in pride. And um, we annotate a lot of them manually for our um, reanalysis. Um, it contains information about the contents of the samples, like organism, um, uh, yeah, labeled or not, the experimental setup, but also the biological question, like which condition um, a sample belongs to. Um, the protein database is in the usual uh, easy, faster format and um, can be either directly downloaded from SwiftProt or Tremble or manually created by some proteogenomic studies you did before. Um, <clears throat> can be with or without so-called decoy proteins that we need later for false discovery rate estimation. Um, in the pre-processing, we, as I said, convert and index um, all of our spectra and the the default format will be our MZML. Um, so everything you have else will be converted into MZML before. Keep that in mind. Um, we combine information from the SDRF and the Nextflow parameters. So currently it's a bit um, uh, mixed where you can set certain parameters because we also wanted to support um, very simple designs um yeah where you'd actually a lot of the information is implied we do some sanity checks um convert convert them into designs for the specific tools but also units for specific tools or uh, certain vocabulary for specific tools uh, and regarding the database we can also generate the decoys for you um it's usually done by reversing or shuffling sequences in the database <laughs> Um, then we perform identification with um, common so-called database search engines. Currently, you can select between uh, MSGF Plus and Comet, or both of them, in which case they will be uh, combined probabilistically by an OpenMS tool called Consensus ID. We then offer a rescoring mechanism um, that uses more features than just the similarity between predicted spectrum and um, observed spectrum. This is currently only possible by uh, the SVM-based tool percolator, but we are uh, heavily developing uh, or trying to integrate uh, deep learning-based scores from, for example, MS2 Rescore. Um, the false discovery rate estimation um, is done based on the well-established target decoy um, approach. We offer FDRs on multiple levels um, PS, the peptide match, peptide spectrum match level, peptide level, protein level, protein group level, and on different scales, either for a specific sample only or for experiment, for the whole experiment. And we can do the so-called picked FDRs that were recently published and show a bit more sensitive sensitivity in large scale experiments. <clears throat> um, for the quantification of the peptides, um, in label-free quantification, we use the uh, OpenMS proteomics LFQ tool, which is also the, the main part of the old 
uh, NF core proteomics LFQ pipeline, which means if you're using that one, um, this is fully integrated and superseded. So you may switch to quantum S. And this performs the following tasks. It does the identification of quantifiable features in your um, mass spec data. This can be done targeted by looking for specific IDs or untargeted by just looking at um, uh, isotopes and illusion shapes. Um, it does then does retention time alignment. Um, it link, links the identifications to get uh, the best matches over all samples. And then you can optionally also transfer identifications to features that do not have an identification, or you can requantify parts of your MS experiment um, if in all samples, but this one, um, or in the most samples, but this sample, there was a feature, but you couldn't find one in this one, then you can extract the, the last the part of the signal. Um, <clears throat> then isobaric labeling, it's, it's much easier because it's just based on the intensity of so-called reporter ions. Um, uh, we support most TMT and eye track plexes. This means the plex just tells you how many uh, channels uh, you can multiplex into one sample, which means this uh, means how many samples you can have in one mass spec run, let's say. And um, we also support so-called SPS, which introduces a third um, fragmentation level for mass specs. Um, then when you have quantified the peptides, you usually want you are interested in the actually the proteins that they come from. Therefore, we have two different uh, inference techniques implemented, the Bayesian one with the OpenMS tool Epiphany, but also a simple rule-based aggregation of peptides to proteins. Uh, and regarding quantification, we support the common strategies, uh, top three peptides per protein. Um, IBAC is a common strategy that normalizes by the length of the protein, for example. Um, those come from OpenMS, but we also have support for um, statistical post-processing tools like MSDUTS and Trickler, which then they have much more elaborate statistical models, uh, and they also include significance testing um, between comparisons of samples, conditions, contrasts. Um, <clears throat> for the, the third branch that is uh, based on the DIAN, the Data Independent Acquisition Branch, we, um, we made it fully parallelizable via uh, so, uh, multi-step analysis. So first you do um, an in silico library prediction and the pre-analysis for every sample. And then only after uh, you do an empirical, like data, data dependent or data based library generation and a final analysis on the full experiment. Um, it is also compatible with MS Dutz. Um, this means you could have relatively you have a, of course, the, the the output will not be comparable in the in the quantities, but it will be comparable in in the format um, compared to other branches of the workflow. Um, and we also convert it as all the other um, branches. It can be converted into MC top, which is a for smaller experiments or a human readable. Um, top based format for um, yeah, quantities and identifications of such experiments. And you can use it immediately for upload to Pride, for example, or publication, which is usually recommended by the journals. Um, yeah, a bit more details on our general outputs. Um, as I said, we have this MC tab for all the quantitative and identification related information. Um, the MC tab in general contains on the right side here, 
uh, metadata, um, a protein section, a peptide section, um, peptide spectrum match, match section, and for uh, metabolomics also a small molecule section. Um, it's, yeah, we, it's used by, it's a community standard, so it's used by a lot of um, yeah, projects and it's very helpful to have it for upload or journals. Um, then we, from our statistical post-processing, we can get um, heat maps or volcano plots for the uh, comparisons between conditions that you can specify in the parameters of uh, the workflow, for example. Um, we are, but we also have a full p QC report, um, which is based on a plugin that we wrote for multi-QC specifically for proteomics. It includes a quality control heat map over all samples, but also detailed plots per sample and a detailed and searchable table um, of the results that um, yes, yeah, connected to an SQL backend. Um, those are some examples of our outputs. Um, the first on the first picture, you can see the that it the experimental design that you have given and how it was interpreted by our uh, tool. Um, they can get very complex in proteomics uh, experiments because uh, you can also fractionize your data, uh, fractionate your data or your, your samples. And um, yeah, with the usual biological and technical replicates um, can get quite complex. And in the, yeah, in the lower part, you can see a heat map of some uh, of some aggregated quality control metrics for specific uh, samples, and um, yeah, things like how many percent uh, of contaminants were identified, um, the average peptide ad ad intensity, mm, how many missed cleavages in your digestion we could find, um, what was the rate of identifications from the overall number of spectra and so on. Uh, then some uh, more detailed um, information about uh, specific samples. Um, for example, the, the number of spectra um, on each level, like fragment spectra or um, survey spectra. Um, how many of them were identified by each of the search engines, how many were identified after consensus ID, um, and so on. And yeah, lastly, um, one application that this workflow already had was a reanalysis of a large part of uh, Pride. So we really sat down um, and were annotating with a large group at Pride, um, a large portion of Pride into the sample to data relationship format, which meant uh, a lot of looking into papers, contacting authors and so on. And, but which also means that you can now just, if you want to reanalyze something in a different way, you can just, download the, the data from Pride or, or give URLs, um, which Nextflow, of course, handles to the FTP. Um, and yeah, re reanalyze it with different settings because the SDRF is already available. Um, we then reanalyzed each entry with our quantum S. Um, the good thing is we, we could analyze many of them because it's um, we made it very robust, their default settings, and also supporting a lot of different experiment types as you, as you have seen. And then, yeah, in the end, we just combined and visualized the results in this case per, um, yeah, per data set or per tissue, because a lot of data sets are very specific for a certain tissue. And um, yeah, we're currently uh, writing a publication on that. And, that was one of the first applications, yes. And I think that's it from our side. Uh, we're happy to answer 
uh, all of your questions. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm just going to uh, remove the spotlights. So um, if there are any questions from the audience, you should now be able to uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask the question right away. So are there any questions from the audience? If not, I actually um, have a question, maybe a bit selfish. Um, sure. It's very nice to say that we, we have some pipelines, at least, that are not NGS-based. <laughs> so I was wondering, uh, what made you choose Nextflow and NF Core for uh, making this pipeline? Um, so the first thing was the, the incredible um, uh, integration of all those large scale um, high performance computing clusters and clouds that we have not seen in, in other uh, workflow managers. Um, of course, a little bit, um, yeah, bias because I, I knew some people from Nextflow, um, but yeah, I, I think it turned out to be the best choice in hindsight anyway. So um, yeah, the end of core team, was very helpful in in implementing all of this, and the um, the AWS tests were also super nice because I, I we as a university we barely have any uh, capability to test it on um, Amazon clouds or something that always costs, and um, yet yeah, I think it gets a better reach also to um to industry by supporting um yeah clouds and yeah and um maybe in the same vein uh, did you find any problems that were specifically there because it is not ngs and because we're often very geared towards ngs yes of course yeah it's not not big problems but some of your um uh, templates, let's say they have a lot of, not a lot, but, um, what was it? For example, I think you, or in the beginning, you had a fast QC parameter that was always supposed to be always there. And we of course had to remove it. And now whenever a template update comes, we have to remove it again and things okay. like that, but yeah, minor things. Okay. Um, are there any more questions from anyone? I would have one. Uh, hi. Yeah. Hi. Uh, great talk. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering what uh, you mentioned the uh, small molecule MS uh, experiments as a future uh, possible uh, application of the quantum MS. Uh, mm -hmm. How how far the or yeah how far is this thought out or uh, yeah where does this stand? Yeah, so implementation wise, it's it's so we just we, we have have a colleague that um, created such a workflow based on um, very similar tools that we already have. That means the OpenMS ones, but also um, some other tools like Sirius for for small uh, molecule kind of database search. Um, in the competitor language, uh, Snakebank, and um, but we at we at least we see that it's a it's a very feasible uh, workflow that we have, and now we want to see um, it should be a rather simple translation of the workflow, but we also want to check with the existing Metabo Igniter workflow, um yeah to, to see if we can combine them um we still have to check how how compatible um SCRF and the MC top would be so that we for everything that we want to include into quantum as we definitely want um we want to start from an SCRF and uh, have as output an MC top or another future 
um, community standard file format. And I, I, we think it should all be possible since there's also an MC top M for metabolomics. And Yasset, I think SDRF should have no problems at all to have some uh, metabolomic specific annotations there. Yeah, I think we have started already to support metabolomics with SDRF. I mean, we have the first call around it, how to do it. And as you said, I think this is a really important point. Um, we have tried to put in QuantMS uh, the starting point and the end of of the workflow should be a standard file formats for anyone who wants to join QuantMS. This would be the case for other use cases like proteogenomics, like immunopeptidomics, or any other use case that want to jump into mass spec quantitation in QuantMS. Should start by one standard file format, something that the data out there is in that file format, and should end up into another standard file format, which is this. In this case, it's MCTAP, but it could be something in the future slightly uh, different. Great, thank you both for the elaborations. Thank you very much. Do we have any more questions from the audience? It doesn't seem so. Then I would like to thank again, Julianus and Yasset. And of course, as usual, also the John Zuckerberg in initiative for funding our bite-sized talks. So thank you very much, everyone. And see you hopefully. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye. Bye.